Coming up right now in the Reef Builders Recap, we've got blue seahorses, the new Obama fish, and the world's first all-in-one aquarium stand. How's it going everyone? You're watching Reef Builders video. I'm your host, Jake Adams, and you are watching this week's episode of the Reef Builders Recap. I hope everybody's enjoying their reef tanks this week, whether it's looking after your fish or fragging your corals. This is the heart of the aquarium keeping season. And uh, you know, with the weather being a little bit cold outside, this is the perfect time to be playing with the tanks and make sure you get as much enjoyment out of them. At the top of the news is the new Obama fish, Tosanoides obama. This is a species of deepwater anthias that was collected by doctors Richard Pyle and Brian Green at uh, Pearl and Hermes Atoll in the northwestern Hawaiian, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Islands, Hawaiian Islands uh, earlier this year, this summer. Two specimens, a male and a female, were collected at a depth of between 90 to 92 meters, or about 300 feet, which explains why this fish had not been seen until very recently. The new fish was named in honor of President Obama to recognize his work to expand the Papahanao Makuakea National Marine no Monument, one of the largest protected marine areas of its kind in the world, encompassing a large swath of the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. In other news this week, it was recently announced that the rising tide has successfully raised the Hawaiian cleaner wrasse in captivity. Labroides tyrophagus is an exotic species of the common cleaner wrasse that is only known from the Hawaiian Islands. Now, the common cleaner wrasse, Labroides demidiatus, is a challenging fish to keep in aquariums, but if you have a large enough tanks, large enough fish population, and an experienced Aquarius who pays attention to careful feeding can have success with this species. However, this has not been the case for the Hawaiian cleaner wrasses. What makes this news particularly exciting is the Hawaiian cleaner wrasse has not been kept in captivity from wild specimens. So these captive raised specimens should do a lot better in captivity since they have been raised on prepared foods. Now, the story has been reported that these fish are captive bred, but that's a misunderstanding as these fish actually originate from eggs that were collected in the ocean and raised in captivity. In other captive breeding news, ORA recently announced that they would be making available their own lightning maroon clownfish. Now, several years ago, this was one of the most exciting fish to hit the hobby in a really, really long time. Matt Peterson, after a long gestation period, successfully raised a true lightning maroon clownfish from a single lightning maroon parent. And since then, the lightning maroon clownfish has spread across the hobby like wildfire. Captive bred lightning maroon clownfish generally sell for $250 to $350, but to be honest, the fish that I've seen at the local fish stores oftentimes have like a bulldog shaped face, stubby fins, uh, poor coloration. So it's my hope that this new breed of lightning maroon clownfish will be of higher quality. So I'm really interested to see what ORA does with the lightning maroon clownfish in the near future as far as offering us high quality specimens and what they might be able to do to develop the strain in the future. Now, when I said I had blue seahorses to show you, I hope you didn't think that I meant a solid blue seahorse. But recently, some pictures arose from some specimens in Japan that are about as blue a seahorse as I've ever seen. Eagle-eyed diver Makoto Morishita spotted these blue seahorses in an area of Kumamoto Prefecture in Japan at a depth of about five meters or just under 20 feet. Makoto-san found about 20 of these seahorses in a radius of around 30 feet, and of those 20, only about seven or eight of them showed this blue coloration. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that seahorses was one of my least favorite fish in aquariums, but if it's possible for these Hippocampus coronatus to be lion bred and develop this blue coloration to be a little bit more intense, man, that would truly be something. So hopefully this is not the last we'll see of these blue seahorses, but it's nice to know at least that they exist. One of my favorite stories this week was the discovery of the second ever pink spot firefish. About five years ago, Yikai T wrote about the first one that he discovered and bought at a local fish store while just looking around. And the pink spot is really out of character for this and other species of firefish. 
The new pink spot firefish specimen was collected by RVS Fish World in the Philippines, and it has a lot of similarities with the first one. Notably, a bright pink patch with some metallic qualities, and it's in the same kind of mid-body position as the other one. Normally when we see aberrant fish, we have some kind of explanation for how they got that way, whether due to some kind of injury, some kind of mutation, an aberration, uh, sexual coloration, or more, most often, hybridization. But because this kind of pink color is not seen in this and other species of firefish, I don't really have any explanation for why this fish is pink. It's just really, really cool to know that this fish is truly one in 10,000 Wrapping up our reef fish news for the week is an amazing set of photographs from Vincent Chalias that he took while diving on the east coast of Bali. There's a lot of cryptic reef critters that live in and around the coral reef. Uh, there's cryptic shrimp and crabs and neuterbronch, but there's not that many truly cryptic fish. So imagine a pipefish that is so small and skinny that it basically looks like a micro eel swimming through the coralites of a galaxia coral. If the galaxy was completely open with his tentacles fully extended, this little guy could swim in between the coralites and be completely covered by the tentacles. There's a few species of pipefish that are solely and exclusively associated with corals. The most famous of these is the long tentacle plate pipefish, but the galaxia pipefish is actually much, much more rare. There's at least three known species of pipefish that are known to live in galaxia corals, and they all belong to the Bulbonericus genus. However, I'm certain that if divers uh, looked at corals a little bit more often, there's probably a couple more species hiding, and uh, it's just nice to see these pictures and familiarize ourselves with a very little known fish. Moving on to product news. Last week I told you about the new Innovative Marine Hydrofill Reservoir, and it seems like Innovative Marine is not done telling us about some new versions of their glass boxes. Earlier this week I learned about the new Fusion Peninsula all-in-one aquariums from Innovative Marine. These are really cool because there's a lot of all-in-one tanks in the aquarium hobby, but these are all follow the same formula. Basically a rectangle that you put against a wall and all the filtration built into the back. But what's cool about peninsula tanks is the filtration is actually built into the end. So if you want, you can actually make these mini room dividers and walk around them. And that gives you a lot more area within which to view your aquarium. The Fusion Peninsula tanks will come in two sizes. There's a 14 gallon and a 20 gallon, both with a 12 by 13 inch cross section. The 14 gallon is 20 inches long and will cost $1.99. Meanwhile, the 20 gallon Fusion Peninsula is 30 inches long, so the classic dimensions of a typical 20 gallon long aquarium. And this one will co cost about $249. Last week I told you about the new eShop's Axiom line of mid-level protein skimmers, and I told you that I was gonna be hearing about the new S-Series from eShop's, and now I've got the whole shebang. The new S-Series from eShop's is their new top-of-the-line protein skimmers, again with the included CJ pump, built into the body, and they have a skimmerler style design with a flush outflow valve, a lot of quick disconnect features, but really what sets these apart is a brand new bubble plate design. The new bubble plate in the eShop's S series is affectionately called the Eddy, and it's a little bit less of a plate because it's a little bit thick, but what it does is it fosters a spiral motion to the air water mixture, encouraging a gentle spin of the water froth inside the body of the S series, hoping to create a longer contact time and generate more protein skimming from this line of protein skimmers. I've seen plenty of manufacturers develop bubble plates that try to encourage a kind of spinning design, but this looks like it might be one of the gentlest yet, and uh, I really look forward to seeing it in person. Looks like we have some new T5 LED replacements on the block. The new B5HO tubes from Biotech Marine are very similar to the E5 tubes we've seen from Euro Aquatics, but Biotech Marine is actually offering these in a few new colors. The new B5HO tubes from Biotech Marine are available in no fewer than eight different colors. There's three shades of white, a 6500 Kelvin, a 10,000 Kelvin, and a 15,000 Kelvin, so a nice cool white color for the reefers. There's three shades of blue, 
uh, an all blue, a blue with UV accents, a blue with red accents. There's a patriotic bulb that's red, white, and blue for truly getting the best of par and color. And finally, a white and red for coloring up uh, freshwater fish tanks or for use over planted tanks. I know I say this a lot, Last, but certainly not least, is one of my favorite stories of the entire year. A product concept so simple, once again, it's amazing that no one's ever thought of it. I'm talking about the new X-Aqua Naked all-in-one aquarium stand. It's called Naked, it's not actually Naked, and it's hard to describe this thing. Basically, imagine if you had a stand made out of all acrylic with a sump built into the bottom, or you could picture a sump with really high walls and a base on which to put your aquarium. The naked all-in-one stand from X Aqua is really cool because the sump area is completely open. There is a built-in top-off reservoir and the open sump is basically intended for you to mix and match uh, the products that you wanna put in there to your desire. Obviously, X Aqua hopes that you'll use their pumps and their protein skimmer, but one device that is uniquely suited to the naked sump stand is a drop-in dual pre-filter. This box basically accepts the drain water from your aquarium. It drains into one filter sock, overflows, and into another filter sock, so you can get two degrees of mechanical filtration. So pretty cool as the first thing to put inside the naked aquarium all-in-one stand. The idea of an all acrylic aquarium stand might seem alien to us now, but in the heyday of acrylic aquariums, in the late 80s and early 90s, and even into the late 90s, it wasn't uncommon to see all-in-one aquariums that were made completely of acrylic. The stand, the tank, and the canopy. Yes, that old chestnut. These glossy acrylic aquarium stands would be kind of tacky by today's design standards, but there's a choice of clear, white, or black acrylic. You can mix and match the walls and the back to suit your taste. And although there's no pricing available, X Aqua will be making these in several different sizes, and I'll be sure to update you as soon as more information is available. You might have noticed I didn't really have any corals in the news this week, so I'm just gonna take an opportunity to freestyle it and show you a video clip uh, from some of my diving in Raja Ampat and show you one of my favorite corals that I was able to get a face-in-face -face -face encounter with when I was in the Solomon Islands. Australia gyrozelli is a really weird coral that is very rare in the aquarium hobby. It is a branching moon coral. Now, when I say moon coral, I'm talking about Favia favites, or the corals formerly known as such because their names have changed, but that's a topic for another video. Moon corals are generally encrusting, submassive, sometimes with some kind of play on the theme, but Australogyra is the only one that specifically grows a thick branching structure that is actually kind of like a hydnophora or a horn coral. This species is really only known from the Solomon Islands and certain part of Australia, and it's very hard to get in captivity because those thick, sharp branches have a tendency to pierce the bag, and this coral is just a really, really poor shipper. I had some interactions with it early on in my reef aquarium career, and then I didn't see it for like 10 years. So when I went to the Solomon Islands, I made a point to look out for it, and it was really cool to see it in the wild. The colonies that I encountered in the Solomon were very beautiful, very majestic, but no one would ever accuse these of winning a beauty contest because they're really light on coloration. The only reason to truly enjoy this coral is because it's so unique. It has some subtle, subtle colors and some subtle details. It's probably a challenging coral to grow because this coral has been in captivity before, and obviously we're not growing it like baby's breath favia or anything like that. But short of telling you where you can find some Australogyra of your own, I hope you enjoyed this spread of pictures that uh, are probably some of the very few pictures of this corals in the wild, especially taken from the point of view of a marine aquarium hobbyist. And wrapping things up, I just wanted to show you again a little bit of eye candy. The rose bubble tip anemone is one of the most popular and celebrated species of anemones in the aquarium hobby. The bright red coloration and their ability to be propagated makes them a favorite the world over. And in various markets, you can find regional strains of bubble tip anemones, like here in Colorado, we have the famous Colorado Sunburst. 
You might think that the rose bubble tip anemone only looks red because of our blue aquarium lighting, but when I saw this huge colony of rose bubble tip in Raja Ampat, it was glowing like a beacon from 100 feet away. It was just truly amazing and a really, really big one. Bubble tip anemones can grow one of two ways. They can either split very often and form colonial fields, but once in a while you see a single specimen that instead of splitting, it just gets bigger and bigger. And this particular rose bubble tip from Raja Ampat was approaching two feet across. So really, really beautiful. I wanna say a sincere thank you to everyone who's watching these videos, who's liking and sharing them with your friends. Uh, your comments really mean a lot to me. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you like what you see and wanna see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know it's the end of the year, but like I've said in the previous several episodes, I've got some huge things in store for this channel. And uh, it's the end of the year, but um, I'm working really, really hard to make sure that uh, in 2017, I hit the ground running. And this is gonna be your must visit place for the best reef aquarium videos and all your reef aquarium news. So from me and from everyone at Reef Builders, I just wanna wish everyone a happy holidays. Don't forget to love your reef tank during these busy times and I will catch you next time.